Chris seems like a happy and kind person, but here are the top 10 red flags about her that we should not be ignoring. First off, we have when Seal exposed her on Instagram. Just days after the Golden Globes in 2018, the singer Seal posted a meme on Instagram consisting of several photos of Oprah, including a photo in which it appears Winfrey is pushing singer Rita Ora toward the disgraced movie mogul and alleged harasser. Seal captioned the images, quote, Oh, I forgot. That's right. You've heard the rumors, but you had no idea he was actually serially violating young actresses who in turn had no idea what they were getting into. My bad. The meme itself read, quote, when you have been part of the problem for decades, but suddenly they all think you're the solution. When Ludacris appeared on Oprah to promote his movie Crash, he claimed she ambushed him with criticism about hip hop lyrics instead of talking about the critically acclaimed movie that he was there to plug. In addition, he said the interview was edited in Oprah's favor. She edited out a lot of my comments while keeping her own in, Ludacris told GQ. Of course, it's her show, but we were doing a show on racial discrimination, and she gave me a hard time as a rapper when I came on there as an actor. He added, quote, initially, I wasn't even invited on the show, and they called the night before to tell me I could be on. So after the taping, she pulled me into a room and we had a five minute conversation. What I got was that by having rappers on her show, she feels like she's empowering them. It was like being at somebody's house who doesn't really want you there. It was so uncomfortable. He added that she criticized him for using the N word in his lyrics. I don't see why people like Chris Rock or Dave Chappelle, who I am huge fans of, he says, it's okay for them to go on Oprah. They speak the same language as I do, but they do it through comedy. So I guess that's acceptable. Next, let's discuss Oprah shutting down an entire food industry. During the height of the mad cow scare in 1996, Oprah invited Howard Lyman, a cattle rancher turned vegetarian, onto her show to discuss controversial practices within the beef industry, including a process now banned in the US called rendering, which involves turning cow organs into feed for other cattle. While Oprah challenged some of his more outlandish statements, which included the suggestion that the disease could become as infected infectious as the AIDS epidemic, she exclaimed at one point that his revelations had, quote, stopped me cold from eating another hamburger. Beef prices plunged for nearly two weeks after the episode aired, eventually reaching a 10-year low. In response, a group of angry cattle ranchers in Texas filed a $10 million lawsuit, claiming she defamed the entire industry. Our next story is insane and also a bit sad. It's not as if Oprah created a theory behind the best-selling self-help book, The Secret, written by New Age guru Rhonda Byron, but by promoting it on two episodes of her show, she may have given it a dangerous level of credence. The book's central premise, The Law of Attraction, is that positive thinking is the route to obtaining anything you want in life, while negative thoughts will cause bad events to occur. But when Oprah's producers received a letter from viewer Kim Tinkum, who had received a breast cancer diagnosis shortly after the shows aired, they were alarmed by how far she had taken the inspiration inspiration. Kim Tinkum wrote that she had decided to forego chemotherapy, instead choosing to follow the book's advice, literally. Oprah brought her onto the show to set her straight and urge her to not, quote, ignore all the advantages of medical science. Kim Tinkum, who went on to follow another New Age regime, unfortunately died in December 2010. Ultimately, Oprah stood by her position that the law of attraction can affect positive change. Oprah is also known for promoting really bad medical medical advice on her old TV show. Oprah MD? Not exactly, but her 7 million daily viewers were fed a steady diet of health tips. While well-known guests like Dr. Oz offer sound advice on eating and fitness, the program at times is a forum for some really questionable medical claims. As Newsweek noted in a cover story, actress Jenny McCarthy has used Oprah's show to link some well-respected childhood vaccines to autism, a claim that most experts definitely dismiss. With hardly a challenge from the host, Suzanne Summers and Robin McGraw, wife of Dr. Phil McGraw, have used the show's reach to endorse hormone therapy for women, though it can also boost serious risks of heart attacks and strokes. While Oprah is careful to acknowledge both sides in medical debates, many experts fear that nuance is lost amid the adoring reception given to the latest miracle cure. Some observers also question Oprah's enthusiasm for not novel cosmetic surgery procedures, which occasionally lead to really unwelcome complications. As Dr. V. Young, a plastic 
surgeon told the New York Times, if she told viewers that arsenic would make them beautiful, we'd be getting hundreds of calls from people asking us for arsenic. Oprah's also been known to promote really toxic weight loss advice. In 1988, just two years after the Oprah Winfrey show was launched, the TV legend revealed during an episode of her show that she had lost a whopping 67 pounds in four months thanks to an all liquid diet. She even wheeled on stage a wagon with 67 pounds of fat on it to visually show her audience how much weight she actually lost. In reality, she later revealed that she had quote starved herself and messed up her metabolism, which ultimately resulted in her gaining it all back and then some pretty quickly. An anonymous guest wrote an entire article on how being featured in an episode of The Oprah Show was quote the worst day of her life. In the article, she writes, being on Oprah changed my perception of what I was doing for a living forever and marked the beginning of my long love affair with social media instead of regular television. The story goes like this. By 2002, she says, I had run my boutique PR firm for six years, helping musicians tell their stories, and I was very satisfied doing it. One fateful day, my telephone rang. It was a call from a producer at the Oprah show. She had read an article about my mom in a magazine where my mom had mentioned her entrepreneurial daughter. Within a week, an Oprah film crew had descended. The show combined live studio and taped interviews with Gloria Steinem, among many famous guests. On the air date, Oprah opened the show by promising, quote, a revealing look at what younger women think about older women. We were told the theme of the show would be generational differences in the workplace, but what it really ended up being was the airing of my painful family struggle in, in front of 40 million viewers. It turns out the show is really about pitting daughters from my generation against their moms, ambitious women who were at the front lines in the battle for women's equality. There was tremendous pain for all the daughters featured. I'm not writing this to air dirty laundry, she says. I'm writing it to make a point about traditional media. Oprah's philanthropic efforts and her general spirit of giving are really well documented, but even that caught a bit of static last September when she and The Rock, with their combined net worth of well over $3 billion, asked the viewers to contribute to the Maui wildfires while only allegedly kicking in $10 million of their own money. The comment section in their request video turned into such a dumpster fire of criticism that the comments were turned off. In Apple TV, TV's new docu-series, The Supermodels, Cindy Crawford is re-evaluating key moments from her career, including one questionable Oprah show moment from 1986 that she now claims was, quote, so not okay. Throughout the episode in question, Crawford sat alongside her then-representative, John Casablancas. Win Winfrey asked Cindy to stand up to give the audience a better look at her figure. Now this is what I call a body, exclaimed Oprah. The host then then pitched several questions to Casablanca's her representative who spoke on Crawford's behalf as if she wasn't even there. She's getting a sense and I'm saying it now in this program, if she wants to, she can be number one in the business, he said. Looking back on her experience, the fashion icon, who is one of the four models featured in the Apple TV series, admitted that the appearance made her feel less than. I was like a child, be seen and not heard, said Crawford in the series. When you look at it through today's eyes, Oprah's like, stand up and show me your body. Show us why you're worthy of being here. In the moment, I didn't recognize it, and watching it back, I was like, oh my gosh, that was so not okay. Really. Especially coming from... Oprah. Despite her humble beginnings, a video began circulating online in 2022 that showed Oprah seemingly left stunned after a fan told her they couldn't afford a $100 jewelry box. The clip was shared to TikTok and it shows someone approaching Oprah and asking for a holiday gift idea for their mom, who is quote, not doing well. A wonderful thing is that jewelry box that I had on favorite things, she said after some thought. A beautiful red jewelry box. That's too expensive for me the person holding the camera interjects. No, it's not, Oprah argues, shaking her head. It, it's really not. It's like 100 and something dollars. A little lower in my price budget, the person says. At this point, Oprah seemingly cannot hide her shock as she responds, lower than $100 with an amused smile on her face. Oprah Winfrey. The lady's been in showbiz for so long that it's impossible to think she hasn't done some shady things throughout her career, right? We're about to look into the times Oprah may or may not have gotten away with some serious fibbing, so stay tuned.
In an ironic twist that only the digital age can serve up, it seems even the great Oprah isn't immune to a social media slip up. Picture this. You're scrolling through your feed when you see Oprah praising the Microsoft Surface, claiming it's her go-to gift for the holiday. Quite the endorsement, right? Well, not so fast. Eagle-eyed followers quickly spotted something amiss. The tweet was sent from an iPad. The rival tech of the surface. Talk about being caught in the act. Not the best look when you're trying to give a shout out to a product that supposedly won your heart. Or at least that's what sponsors would like everyone to believe. It's a modern day tale of endorsements gone wrong and a reminder that on the internet, Someone's always watching. This mishap with Oprah leads us into a broader conversation about the authenticity of celebrity endorsements. In the age of social media, it peels back the curtain on the fact that sometimes endorsements are less about personal preference and more about contractual agreements. It's a stark reminder to consumers that while celebrity backing might bring a product to our attention, it doesn't always mean it's their genuine gadget of choice. Oprah has been called out for using weight loss medication despite being a longtime ambassador for Weight Watchers. The famous talk show host confirmed she was using this medication to help her weight. In a revealing chat, she said her slim figure is thanks to the medication and a healthier lifestyle overall. She's admitted to using the weight loss med, Ozempic, and no one is saying that she should be hated for doing what she wants to her body, but she should think about the unrealistic standards she has set when she was initially lying about taking meds for weight loss while promoting Weight Watchers. Oprah has stepped into the spotlight not to host a show, but to address the recent criticisms around the People's Fund of Maui, a cause she passionately advocates for. Along with Dwayne The Rock Johnson, Oprah launched this heartfelt initiative seeding a staggering $10 million to assist those affected by Maui's devastating wildfires. The goal was straightforward, provide direct financial support to the victims. However, not everyone saw it that way. The internet erupted with heated debates, some accusing the duo of not doing enough despite their considerable donation. Oprah's reply? She genuinely believed that their contribution was substantial, the kind that would typically receive a standing ovation at fundraising galas. But the morning after their big pledge, instead of applause, there was a digital uproar. I woke up, checked the news, and was met with a barrage of negativity, Oprah recounted on CBS Mornings. Describing the intense scrutiny she faced, Dwayne Johnson, deeply connected to the islands by heritage and childhood memories, has yet to weigh in on the controversy. And let's talk about the time Ludacris made an appearance on Oprah's show. Now the dude was there to shine a light on his role in the movie Crash. You know, that intense drama from 2004 that snagged a bunch of awards, but things didn't go as planned. Luda opens up about how instead of focusing on the movie, he found himself in the hot seat facing some tough questions about his hip hop lyrics. He wasn't shy about saying the final cut of the interview seemed to lean heavily in Oprah's favor with some of his key points on the cutting room floor. She kept her own comments while a lot of mine got axed he shared in a GQ interview. It turns out Luda wasn't even slated to be on the show initially. They called him up last minute. And after all that, Oprah had a private chat with him expressing her views on what it means to feature rappers on her show. Ludacris compares the whole experience to an awkward visit where you feel like the host isn't thrilled to have you over. In a scorching critique, actress Rose McGowan has leveled some heavy accusations against one of television's most beloved figures. In an explosive tweet, McGowan lashed out calling Oprah as fake as they come. She expresses a sense of vindication that the the public is starting to see a side of Oprah she perceives as disingenuous. McOwen, a pivotal voice in the hashtag MeToo movement, doesn't mince words, openly wishing the renowned talk show host's authenticity to match her public persona. The Twitter war between Rose and Oprah has made headlines with many wondering where the root of their animosity lies. It seems that McOwen's main issue with Winfrey stems from her perceived hypocrisy in light of recent events involving an extremely controversial person. She's been vocal about holding powerful figures accountable for their actions, and in this case she believes Winfrey is not practicing what she preaches. This raises an important question about how much we truly know about the people we idolize and put on a pedestal in our society. In her stirring speech at the Golden Globe Awards, Oprah once again demonstrated why she is considered such a powerful and motivational figure. Her successful entrepreneurial journey, her impactful philanthropy, and her natural heartfelt connect with people are truly commendable. However, there's a twist in the tale. Over time, Oprah has, through different media avenues, unintentionally promoted some questionable health practices.
practices. This very aspect had the scientific community in a bit of an uproar. On YouTube, we often talk about the influence celebrities have on public opinion, and Oprah's case is particularly fascinating. Notably boosted Dr. Oz's popularity, who, despite being a charming TV personality, has faced criticism for advocating medical advice and products lacking scientific backing. Consider the episode with the green coffee bean extract, a supposed weight loss miracle that fell flat after closer scrutiny and legal intervention. It's concerning when only a fraction of health recommendations on a show like The Dr. Oz Show stand up to scientific validation. And yet, even after distancing herself slightly by canceling Oz's radio show amidst professional pushback, Oprah maintains ties with him, showcasing the complex relationship between media influence, celebrity endorsement, and evidence-based medicine. In another contentious twist in media careers, Oprah played a pivotal role in the rise of Philip, Dr. Phil McGraw, who now reigns as daytime TV's top earner. Portrayed as the valiant hero who saves people from the grips of addiction, Dr. Phil's approach is not without its detractors. A joint investigation by STAT and the Boston Globe cast a critical eye on the Dr. Phil show, revealing troubling allegations that in chasing ratings, the welfare of certain guests was jeopardized, facing withdrawal without proper medical aid, and episodes indicating coercive nudges towards dangerous situations just to procure meds. As intense as these revelations are, the show's spokesperson denies them all. Further probing unearthed evidence, suggesting that the carrot for treatment centers to buy into Dr. Phil's virtual reality venture, a series of VR scenarios where he offers advice, is none other than the promise of publicity across his and related platforms. While Oprah Winfrey's intentions in championing alternative medicine are likely well-intentioned, her influence has unfortunately had a negative impact on scientific understanding amongst the American populace. This phenomenon, often referred to as the oprah of medicine is a concern that surgical oncologist Dr. David Gorski, a contributor to the science-based medicine website, has expressed disappointment over. As pointed out by A.V. Salk of the Washington Post, should Winfrey ever decide to enter the political arena, her advocacy for unconventional medical practices could present numerous challenges that would need addressing during her campaign. With an estimated 44 million viewers per week, Oprah has a powerful platform to spread her beliefs and opinions, and while she may have good intentions with her advocacy for alternative medicine, her influence has unfortunately led to a dangerous trend of misinformation and pseudoscience. Dr. Gorski points out, Winfrey's promotion of unproven or debunked treatments can have harmful consequences for those who trust her and follow her advice. In the Apple TV Plus docuseries, The Supermodels, Cindy Crawford has dropped some bombshell comments about a moment with Oprah that's got the internet seriously buzzing. So buckle up, because we're going back to 1986 when a 20 year old Cindy graced the Oprah Winfrey show. But here's the twist. Cindy alongside her agent, John Casablancas, didn't just sit for a chat, she had to stand and showcase her model physique. Fast forward to the docuseries and Cindy is calling out this moment as not cool, especially by today's standards. It's a real look-see moment as Cindy felt objectified, a stark contrast to Oprah's celebrated history of empowering women, but hey, opinions differ. And entertainment reporter Stephanie Tacky offers a different angle, reminding us that supermodel status is often tied to their iconic figures. Was it just the nature of the 80s showbiz? Was it more about respecting Cindy's legendary career? Cindy's comments have sparked a debate about the treatment of models. In recent years, there has been a significant shift towards body positivity and embracing all body types in the fashion world. In an Elle magazine interview back in January 2006, which later circulated on TMZ, 50 Cent offered a critique of Oprah, suggesting that her originally targeted audience and point of view had shifted. He claimed Winfrey, once a voice resonating with black women, had progressively directed her content towards middle aged white women to the point where he felt she represented that demographic. 50 Cent's remarks were accompanied by a symbolic gesture of naming his dog Oprah as a subtle jab. However, the rapper and talk show icon addressed her differences in an episode of Oprah's Next Chapter, where 50 Cent highlighted that he felt targeted by her critiques, which directly opposed the themes in his- Number 10, unseasoned chicken. I dislike unseasoned food more than anyone, I think. Well, probably the same amount as any other person of color. Anyway, Oprah definitely feels the same way I do because when a guest on her show presented her with a plate of beige, sad looking food, she took a bite and immediately asked for extra salt and pepper to be added to this dish of food. To which the guest responded, there is no salt and no pepper. Moment of silence here for the poor bird that died just to be cooked in such a disrespectful manner. Oprah was shocked. 
The audience was shocked. The dead bird on the plate was shocked. Everyone was shocked. I don't know how this lady thought it would be a good idea to feed a multi-millionaire, ultra-famous, hella influential black woman a plate of unseasoned chicken. Like, girl, go get some culture. Go taste some mashed potatoes that aren't made from powder, please. Number nine, Jay Leno. In a jaw-dropping interview on Oprah, Jay Leno unleashed a ton of confessions and excuses, revealing the messy reality behind his return to The Tonight Show, in which he was accused of having a part in the network's decision to reinstate him as The Tonight Show host while canning Conan O'Brien. Admitting to telling a white lie about retiring in 2004, Leno blamed the chaos on a multitude of factors, including being sucker punched by Jimmy Kimmel while he appeared on The Leno Show. Oprah, surprisingly unsympathetic, challenged Leno on his past jabs at fellow comedians, particularly Jimmy Kimmel's big jaw remark, which led to Leno hitting back at him with dark jabs at Letterman's unfaithfulness towards his wife. Leno defended his decision to accept the role on the show as an attempt to keep his staff employed. He acknowledged the show's failure but justified taking back his old job when offered. A surprising poll result from Oprah's audience revealed overwhelming support for Conan O'Brien in the midst of the mess. Leno's attempt to deflect blame onto NBC's handling of the situation took a dark turn, and the interview left viewers questioning Leno's actions and motives, making it clear that the fallout from this Oprah appearance would definitely linger. Number 8. Cindy Crawford This American model and actress was a guest on The Oprah Show in 1986, when Crawford was just 20 years old, alongside John Casablancas, who was her rep at Elite Modeling Agency at the time. In the resurfaced clip, Oprah asks Casablancas if Crawford has always had her body, before asking her to stand as she states, now this is what you call a body. Well, now, the supermodel had appeared on the docu-series called The Supermodels, where she reflects on this moment, and she refers to herself as a child because she had not felt seen and not heard. Crawford admits she didn't notice it at the time, but now looking at it, Oprah does state, stand up and show us your body. Show us why you're worthy of being here, which made her uncomfortable as the model says this is not okay, especially from Oprah. As of now, Oprah hasn't commented on this situation, but many viewers have spoken up about this moment that was captured for television. Gig King was actually asked about this situation where she admits she hasn't seen the clip but has heard about it, stating she felt disappointed and surprised in Oprah. However, there isn't any feud or anything between Oprah and Crawford according to King. As she stated, as far as I know, everything is good between Oprah and Cindy. What do you think about Oprah's requests to Crawford during that interview? Number 7. Elizabeth Taylor In 1988, Elizabeth Taylor joined Oprah for an interview where she was questioned about her relationship and the myriad of dating rumors surrounding her at the time. Elizabeth didn't say much to answer these questions as she likely wanted to keep personal information private, but Oprah wanted more. She began to reply sarcastically to Elizabeth by stating, you're so revealing, you've got to stop talking so much, Miss Taylor, which then Elizabeth clapped back with, this is what your friends wanted, right? Which didn't seem to impress Oprah, as she then said, I just want to know, tell me so we can all go home. If you tell me, I'll go home. Prior to this interview, Elizabeth had actually given Oprah a heads up and told her to avoid questions about her relationship, but it didn't really seem like Oprah followed these requests and she even came out to say that this interview was still painful to watch for many reasons, including her bad hair. I mean, especially with the heads up before the interview started, Oprah could have and definitely should have avoided this entire incident by simply following Taylor's requests. Number 6. Lance Armstrong Cyclist Lance Armstrong tried to clear his name when he spoke to Winfrey about using performance enhancing drugs. The host asked him several questions, including, did you ever take banned substances to enhance your cycling performance? To which Armstrong quickly answered yes, admitting his wrongdoing and stating he would spend the rest of his life apologizing to people and trying to remedy the situation. The cyclist insisted that he was not doping when he returned in 2009, but the US Anti-Doping Agency CEO said Armstrong lied again. Also, anti-doping agency is kind of a crazy sentence and an even worse or better name. Despite Oprah's achievement in securing the interview, many spoke out about the flaws in the set and camera work as well as Armstrong's perceived lack of genuine remorse. Drawing comparisons to iconic TV confessions, the suggestion 
is made that Oprah could have taken a different approach to elicit more compelling responses from Armstrong. Many wonder if Armstrong would have agreed to the interview under a more critical stance, ultimately portraying Oprah as potentially too forgiving and going way too easy on the cyclist. Number 5. James Frey In 2005, Oprah Winfrey's book club picked up the book from author James Frey, which was a memoir. Oprah spoke very highly of the book, giving it a glowing review, but after it was revealed that his memoir was actually comprised of mostly made up stories, he went on Oprah's show to apologize and hopefully to clear his name. There he said, I don't have a lot of respect for the genre, which okay, pause, because why would you write a memoir then? It seems like you don't respect yourself at that point. He also claimed that he believed most people who wrote memoirs fabricated many of the stories within, so what he did wasn't that bad I guess? He just got caught. I mean like if you're writing made up stories, then you're just a fiction writer at that point. Time to release a dystopian series James Frey, or wait, does he not respect that genre either? I guess he'd write fiction whether you respected it or not. Number 4. Lindsay Lohan In the own docu-series featuring Lindsay Lohan titled Lindsay, Oprah Winfrey is seen urging Lohan to be truthful and cut out the nonsense in her quest for recovery. The unusual exchange raises concerns about the intertwining of Lohan's recovery process with the reality show format, seemingly unpacking her rehabilitation for public consumption and entertainment. This approach seemingly contradicts the principles of AA, which emphasizes private and anonymous recovery, and publicizing the struggle with addiction can hinder the chances of success. Many questioned Oprah's role in potentially exploiting Lohan's journey for the sake of entertainment, and noted the inherent risks of making the recovery process a public spectacle. While at the time, this premise seemed to fit Lohan's dual goals of sobriety and making a comeback to the industry, many are still critical of Oprah to this day from seemingly exploiting Lindsay. Number 3. The Olsen Sisters They appeared in a 2004 interview with Oprah where they were confronted with rumors. At the time, the two sisters were 18 years old, and the rumors were regarding these girls and their eating habits. Oprah says, I know a new rumor that's recently surfaced has really upset you, right? You know the one about eating? And the twins responded by saying, either you're too fat or you're too skinny. People are going to write what they want. We try not to read the good, the bad, and to that response it seems like they got the awkward question out of the way, right? Nope, because Oprah thought the appropriate follow up question was, what size are you by the way? And of course this clip resurfaced all over the internet in 2021 with many viewers feeling bad for the twins, especially because Oprah pointed that rumor out towards these young stars, which made some fans believe the twins were uncomfortable. Number 2. Sally Field Oprah asked this actress an extremely uncomfortable and honestly inappropriate question regarding her former partner, Burt Reynolds, during a sit down years ago. Winfrey asked Fields whether Burt slept with his toupee on or off, and for Fields' response, she went cold on Winfrey. Winfrey herself addressed this awkward interview back in 2021, where she revealed she now cringes at the thought of asking Fields that horrific and very surface level kind of boring interview question. She also understands why Fields went cold following that question, but Oprah, as she said, knows she deserved it. Oprah does claim her producers said she had to ask Fields that question, which she did, and it caused Fields to completely shut off and Oprah says they were both unable to get into the groove of the interview again. Number 1. Tom Cruise This one was extremely popular and talked about. Though if we're being honest, I really don't see what all the fuss and uproar was about, but you know, whatever, it was early 2000s, I wasn't alive, whatever. This gets our first place spot due to the damage it was expected to do on the ultra famous Tom Cruise's career. While appearing on Oprah's talk show, Tom Cruise Cruise began jumping up and down on the couch like an actual child, screaming that he was in love and then air punching the floor or something like that. I'm honestly not sure. Tell me what you think he's doing, please, because uh, I don't I don't know. Anyway, Oprah's reaction to this whole ordeal is what actually makes this entire thing so awkward. She looks at him like he is actually insane, like he's this weird creature, which I mean, fair, but it creates a very awkward air that surrounds the entirety of the interaction. After the incident, Tom Cruise faced a lot of backlash in the up and coming tabloid universe and displayed for the first time just how much power and influence tabloids are capable of wielding. And that wraps up our video. Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. I hope you enjoyed my rambling and of course I hope you learned something. Bye!